Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the pit tour you did not expect from Empire Performance Hydroplanes. We are here at the 2023 Columbia Cup for unlimited hydroplanes. Right now, they're dropping in the 2.5 stocks. I'll try to get you some video of that in a minute. Uh, this black boat you see, oh, well, let's not miss this one. This is an experimental boat. They're running some kind of modern Toyota engine or something in it. This is Jason S. Laxon. Fury. Uh, been doing a little bit of work for Jason this weekend and we've got the boat going pretty quick. It's 2.5 stock. Right there is the U3 Turbinator team. Sadly, they were just on the water and Jimmy King was hanging. There was him and two turbines just battling it out and the motor let go. So they're waiting for it to come back to the dock. Another 2.5 here, they're waiting for the sling. They just set Jason, pardon me, they just set Kyle Davenport in the water. This is his right here. I just built the carburetor for him uh, yesterday. It's working well. He has a little trouble keeping himself from getting uh, penalized, so there's that. There's the Terminator's bunk. Sorry, I can't show you that one, at least not yet. Let's get around here. I think we got one more 2.5 we can see here and then we'll have to exit this area. I know it's gonna be hard to hear. We'll go back in the other side. Uh, they've been kicking butt with this one here today. Uh, Jeff Bernard driving. Uh, pretty much cleaned everybody's clocks all weekend. And that's not really fair to say, it's just, if you've ever watched Jeff Bernard run, he's really good at, uh, at the milling period, gets lane one, and uh, you know how hard to play racing is, it's hard to pass. We're in the pits here now at the Hop Racing Team, Grand Prix Team. Nothing like a handful of these things screaming past you. Long distance award, Jeff Bernard is also driving this one. This is Mike Grindell's boat uh, coming from back east. Uh, Mike and team win a lot. He runs the HRL series back east and they came out here and decided they were going to give it a shot out here and they're running really well. That's what I'm talking about right there. You get seven Grand Prix going by and you know that you're alive. Okay, this is slinging the 225 over. It's a pretty big deal to uh, be invited to run out here at the Columbia Cup here on the Columbia River in Kennewick, Washington. And they invited the 2.5s out, and that's just the coolest thing ever, man. Uh, I had one years ago, and always tried to talk the water follies into letting us run, and they wouldn't do it, but now they're here. This is really unusual. This is a Stoddaker design hull. Uh, you can tell because Stoddaker just likes using flat pieces of plywood to build his boats, and uh, so everywhere you can, it's just flat plywood. Wait till you check out this turn fin. Don't go away. By the way, look at that cockpit. How unusual. There's the turn fin hanging on a bracket way out the side. Why is it way out the side? Because there is no side to the sponson. He just saws it off in the middle and sticks the plywood there and says, there you go. So Rob Hall brings this thing out once every few years and gives it a go. And then you know what? It runs pretty good. All right, I'm going to have to exit this particular secured area and we're going to go down that way. So I'm going to refire the video here in just a second. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. You old timers, this is going to be a real treat for you. I should be shooting this in black and white because, um, of course, in Seattle, Washington is a hydroplane and race boat museum where they rebuild a lot of the vintage hulls. Ooh. I mean, look at this. Don't worry, we're going in there. We're going to get a close look here. I'm, I'm a very important man, so if you just scowl and walk fast, they let you through. That's actually a lie. I do have the right path to... Look at this. This guy's sitting down low. Let's go look at the Bardal. Oh, I mean, come on. This is some cool vintage stuff right here. I remember these from when I was a kid, man. Right here on the Columbia River. 
course they are uh, in better shape than they ever were back then. The museum, they rebuild them so these things are show pieces and then they take them out on the water and run them hard. We're going to talk our way into getting up and looking at a cockpit I think is what we're going to try to do here. If I can find somebody that I know I'll do that. The old Notre Dame. I mean, come on. How cool is this? Of course, you all have seen the old wet sponsons, yeah. Yeah. See, back in the day, they feared when they were building these things, they always feared if they blocked that in so it was a closed hole in the front, the boat would sit so high that the driver couldn't see anything. So they wanted the front end to come down during the milling period so the driver could see where the heck he was going. Of course, they finally gave up on that over time and they started making holes lower profile and closing up the sponsons. And look at the decking on this. The Wahoo! Oh, well, we got a little wrenching going on here. Of course, it's all this old gray haired guy's doing this now. How you doing? Good. Legit. All the way back to the way they ran the rudders back then. I mean, this is all, this is the real deal. There's the rebuild date. Stinking amazing. All right. You want to go see some modern stuff? Oh, we need to take a look at monkey business right here. Good group of guys there. I was helping them out a little bit earlier. They, on their last heat, the boat started running like poo poo. And we took a look and found that it smoked one rocker arm and the cams worn pretty badly. And we stuck a new rocker on it, hoping for the best. That makes it tough, but there you go. All right, I know this is what you guys want to see. You kids, anyway. Darn turbines, anyway. <laughs> I'm an old timer. Pretty nice program here. Boat looks beautiful. Jamie Nielsen's your driver here. See a little modern hydroplane sponsor design. We'll look right here. Ah, Grand Prix. Yeah, oh buddy. Sponsored by the trust company. Miss Renee, I didn't know that. I'm sure there's a story there somewhere. Pretty cool paint. Looks like they've got it all boxed up, ready to go. Connor's taking care of it there. He is an extraordinary pit crew member. He's been around these things a long time. I know a lot of you guys root for the 440, man, oh man. Smaller than your average unlimited. Brent Hall's driving it this year. Hoping all the best for Brent. I haven't, uh, to be quite honest, between the toy boats and then uh, every time I come over here, I wind up wrenching away on the uh, 2.5s and then I really haven't hardly watched any of the racing except that last heat where poor Jimmy had the motor let go up at the top end. There you go, for those of you that are wanting to build it quite unique in its design. I do believe that this would be an awesome RC boat. I think it has done a lot of things right. And quit arguing with me about needing a lot of angle on the fin. Look at that. Really, really square intake. But, I mean, it's all pretty clean. It's nicely done. That's the 440. You want to see underneath? There you go. You got your water trap here. Got a little dam there. The idea is to, for, to hold water, keep the nose up a little bit when you're crawling. It helps them pop up out of the hole. It's a good trick on your toy boat, by the way. Just don't go too far or it's going to catch water. I mean, catch water when you don't want it to, you know? If you know what I mean. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Flavor pack. 
Oh, that's a pretty small motor. Yeah, see, they run these electric motors in this one. Ha, <laughs> no. Oh, I can't believe you believe me. Check out those tiplets there. This is that unique design where the sponson drops away and then they've got these little wings. Nobody really knows if it does anything, but it sure looks cool. I believe that's a Dave Philwalk design. Dave does it, everybody does it. I don't know what's going on in here. They got a secret little tent. I'm guessing there's a swamp cooler in there. The driver sits in there with his suit on or something and waits. So in the monkey see, monkey do department, of course everybody's got these little wings all over their sponsons now. As soon as Dave does it on one boat, everybody runs back to their shop and gets their uh, saws all out and starts cutting the boat up and dropping the back of the sponson and putting little wings on. And I don't know, maybe it works. Of course the rib running down the cowling, you gotta do that, right? Why? Because it looks wicked cool. Is there another reason? I don't know. Place to put a sponsor. There you go. See, that's the, is that the, uh, is that the electric motor you guys are used to run your yeah. boat? You just yeah. put in there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all the help, Scott. Yeah, you're welcome. Strong racing. Boy, they have come on strong, I'll tell you what. There's another one. Here, you want to get a look at the back of that? We'll go right up here and you can take a look, see how that drop works. You kind of see the extent of the drop. Damn that in. There's every good reason, I think, uh, to run that drop. First of all, you just kind of want to let the wind go if you cut off the back of the sponson bluntly, as we've done for decades now. Uh, you're really going to create a little bit of a vacuum area back there. I mean, according to all applicable theories, right? Wouldn't you want to just let the wind move freely over the sponson? I say yes. Uh, unusual little doodads here. I know this is an aerodynamic trick. There is some proven theory to that. Um, evidently helps the wind move more freely across, which is hard to imagine, but it's true. See, they even dropped this side a little bit. Someone finally realized, boy, we need to just let that air go. Uh, I dig this here. Comes out like once a year, right here. My old buddy Austin Ekrit, the fastest guy. And no offense, okay, um, to anybody that owns or works on his boat. I've always called him the fastest driver in the slowest boat. Back in the day when I ran my boat, I could tell this kid was the best driver out here, but his boat was garbage. And so he was pretty easy to beat, but he was always first to the start, first to the first turn. And then, uh, darn if he didn't start speeding up, and, and I started liking him, so I built a motor for him, and then he set the world on fire, and he's won some national titles, and now, that's in 2.5 stock, and now these guys called him up and said, hey, you look like a good driver, you want to drive my GP? And he said, okay. Came out here last year, jumped in it, went out and won the race. Ha! Ah. So, I don't know what's going on with it, I haven't talked to him. Uh, they went dead in the water yesterday while he was kicking everybody's butt, and it died Oh, about 50 yards from the start finish line. He got out there, he jumped out on the deck, he started paddling the water. <laughs> and, and at this point, I still don't know if he was just joking around or if he was literally trying to get the boat to move across the line. I think he was probably trying to get the boat to move across the line. <laughs> it did not. And uh, sadly, he got towed in. So I don't know. I hope he's in the final. I have no idea at this point. Like I said, I've been busy. I've had my head down. But, uh, Austin's a great kid. Somebody, somebody should put him in one of these. I, I know you think that. I mean, you just say that about all kinds of great drivers. No, nope. Austin's the real deal. There you go, the Graham trucking man. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera way up, you know. I mean, they're all cranked way up high on their trailer, so it's really, really hard to get a good shot of them. But that's good for a guy like me because what I'm interested in is what they look like on the bottom. That's a turn pin. Look how thin that is. 
got some fancy steel going on right there. You ever bought a chunk of 17.4? Little bitty piece will set you back 500 bucks. And then it's super duper hard to machine. It's crazy stuff. And you build it and you design it and you cut it and it doesn't work good. And you're like, ah, it's junk. You throw it away. Do it again. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I think I'm at the end of the line. Let me turn around here and see. Two to the five. Oh, man, I missed the home street. Another one down there. I know you want to see them. I'll try to catch those later. I got to go over here and watch my boys run these two fives. Sorry, hang tight. I'll be back. Okay, bingo. Big winner right here of the Columbia Cup. Jason S. Laxon in the Fury. A couple other boats jumped. However, everybody kept the hammer down. Jason got a legal start and he still passed everybody anyway. Thank you, man. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Happy. Made the magic happen. Ah, uh, just one piece of it. It's a team. But, uh. Oh, yeah. You're wrong. Yeah, thank you. There's, oh, that might have something to do with it right there. I don't, uh, but I don't know for sure. I don't know. It's just a rumor that I've heard. And it's wicked cool looking. By the way, this boat was purple. This is the former chaotic dream of Leah Husik that ran in Valley Field years ago with one of my engines in it, and we won Valley Field with it. So, it's it, man. this boat has a history right here. All right, I'm gonna go talk to Jason and give him an attaboy. Just thought you'd like seeing that. Okay, wrapping it up. I know I told you I'd give you a look. Racing's over. Of course, nobody knows who won. This is H1, so it'll be uh, four or five days before they decide or something like that. Uh, just kidding, but it's probably true. Okay, Home Street. Know there's a lot of Home Street fans out there. Not against the rails today. Beautiful machine. Everybody's trying to wrap up and get the heck out, you know, so they just sat it down. Oh, they're calling the crane back over. They didn't get it properly set on the bunk, so they're going to reset that. Here we have the Goodman Real Estate. For those of you that like the whole gold look, we are underneath Bernie's tree. The previous year's champion gets their pick if they'd like to be up underneath Bernie's tree. They call it Bernie's tree because Bernie Little's boat, Miss Budweiser, spent a lot of time up underneath this tree back in the day. I'm gonna go around behind. Or you want to see underneath? Well, I do want to stay out of their way, but. I got a feeling they'll probably just put a little bit of tension on it, give her a little push, and that'll be that. So maybe we'll be better off going around behind here. I love these sponsor designs they're running now. A lot of water catching going on. A whole lot of the design has to do with when they're trolling, you know. They got that 80 mile an hour limit, and they need the boat to sit light as a feather at 80 miles an hour yet not disrupt the air in the water when the thing's doing 200, so it's crazy. I think they might have got it. All right, beautiful machine. Oh, I wonder if they picked up all the parts off of the U3 yet. Do um, you want to go back down and take a look at that? They, uh, so I told you it was kicking some butt on the outside, hanging with. I thought he was going to go around some of these fellas and... Uh, I thought the motor blew up, but it was, what it was doing was hitting rev limiters or floating the valves because the uh, prop shaft broke off. Oh, it's way down there. I'm going to pause you and then I'll, I'll get back to you. But it's pretty cool walking by everybody here though, isn't it? So many fun toys. All right, hang on. I'll be right back. Oh, this is kind of fun. They got a bunch of these on tilt. Let's take a look on the way by. Look at that. Can you see it? I hope you can see the, the quality of that restoration. And look how beautiful this motor is. Oh. Oh, now I've got the sun right in there, don't I? That's unfortunate. The sun's sitting where it is right now. I'm hoping that we can. Oh, yeah. No, can't see a thing. There we go. 
There you go, US-1, look at that, 1958 reproduction there. Yep, for those of you making stickers. Look at the bottom of these things, that's how we did them back in the day. This big old flat bottom thing, and just kind of sweep it up to the front, hope for the best. There's a turn fin. Look at that monster. Yep, even on these vintage, they run them the way they run them. Really awesome to watch these things cornering and stuff out there when they, they run so much better than they did back in the day. Oh man, yeah, they're closing the pits, but it's okay, I'm a very important man, so hopefully I won't get thrown out. Oh, I'm telling you, it looks great. I think I nailed it on the valve cover. Check out my 3D printed motors, available only from Rattlesnake RC at allrc1.com. This is just a beauty. The Notre Dame. Oh, man. I do want to see in that cockpit. Hang on, we're going to take a look over there. I don't know. I'm a motor guy. That's why I keep showing you these motors. Let's take a look. Okay. Oh, there you go. I think that's pretty legit. See some fairly modern electronics there. Can't blame him for that. Look how perfect it is. It's the born on date here. Is this one we looked at before? Okay, 72323? No, 727. Uh, I think that's probably a, a, a tech sticker to run for today. Yeah, yeah, because they all have that same one on them. Yeah, they got it all polished. I don't know if you can see the sun glinting off of that. It's all just perfect. Looks like a modern runner there on the sponsor, and you can't blame him for that either, you know. I mean, you got to be safe, but uh, the design is exactly as they were. Yeah. All right, where'd we wind up? Close to the U3, I think. Hang on, let me see. That's way over there. Gonna pause. Don't worry, you don't have to watch me walk. Unless you want to. All right, I'll just keep it running. That's all you had to do was ask. Premonition, they pulled in, they pulled in off of the, uh, during the final, uh, it was still running, but they're unhappy with something. Came in, happy, I believe they took third. My buddy Austin in that, that other yellow boat down the road uh, finished second. Uh, Mike Grendel, remember I told you this thing's a rocket with Jeff Bernard driving. Of course, Jeff drilled the start and, uh, and ran away with it. Now, Austin was on his hip the whole time, but as you know, if you know anything about hydroplanes, it's awful hard to pass. And Jeff's no dope. He's been driving these things for a long time. So congratulations to Mike Grendel and the whole team and to Jeff Bernard for a job really well done. Probably feels better after their valley field loss blowing up 50 yards from the finish line. Uh, let's see. Okay, taking the motor out at the end of the day. Here's a special treat that few other people were going to see. And that's what it looks like when the entire prop comes through. Can you see the shape? They sheared the shaft and then the prop came up and popped right through. And that perfect. You could probably measure that opening and know what size prop they were running. Looks like the bees are going to come back and get some honey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, Charlie says that, uh, that the bees can uh, set up shop there in that honeycomb. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's the, I, I could measure that right now and know what prop you were running. <laughs> you can see right where it just popped right through. Kind of. Yeah. Which I know, I know it's not funny. So okay, I'm not <laughs> trying to make, I'm not trying to make light, but you, you might as well at this point. Yeah. What I do know was the boat was screaming on the outside, hanging, thought he had it, and it let go. You just gotta get some love. Yep. Yep. You just gotta have some love. Yep. What a great show, though. Sure appreciate you. Right, let's go back and take a look at the back. I don't. Wasn't a whole. It wasn't any greater damage, was there? As far as you know. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. The props are hard. Yeah, that is a heartbreaker. I don't know if you heard Charlie. He said they're going to dive for it and try to recover it because that uh, I'm just telling you 
and you ain't never seen nothing move the way this thing was moving all the way on the outside uh, with the best of the best on the inside and their fancy turbines and all you can hear is this thing just winding out and then that shaft let go I don't know they've already removed the shaft it had really funky looking brake on it okay now I believe I've shown all of them to you uh, here's a thing you already don't know I don't I don't know where I'm gonna put in the uh, footage of the winner okay where I thought that Jason Aslaxon was the winner but he put on a clinic drove around everybody and then later I'm not naming any names for divisions and race divisions and old boys clubs and all of that and they decided that he might have veered out on somebody and they gave him a one minute penalty now my other my other buddy Jason Aslaxon not Jason, he's the one that got penalized. Kyle Davenport takes the win. So, I still feel pretty good about that. This one uh, is running my tune and my carburetor on it. And, uh, and is a rocket. So we're all feeling pretty good. We're gonna go grab a trophy and I'll catch you guys later. Please like and subscribe, share with a friend. Pass the love around. Later, bye.